So just the other day, I spent an hour diving into the comments here on YouTube. Yes, believe it or not, I do read the majority of the comments that you guys leave below the videos because honestly, it feels great to read your guys' stories about how you have used style, how you have used the information on this channel to become the man you know yourself to be. In addition, you guys ask a lot of good questions, which I put on a list for possible future videos. That being said, on occasion, there is some constructive criticism down there. This guy's completely full of sh Who does this guy think he is to give any style advice? He can't even dress himself. Himself. Style doesn't matter. Just look at a tech billionaire. Well, straight up, gents, I can't argue with those first two comments. But that last one, I completely disagree with. Now, it may not be obvious, but all these tech billionaires, they do care about their image. In fact, I would argue that all of them understand this one style rule that I'm going to teach you in today's video. In fact, I learned this style rule from a lawyer buddy of mine that never lost an argument. Seriously, Tom, I love you, but you are a complete pain in the <coughs> The reason being is that Tom can take any side of any subject and argue in a way that you can't disagree with him. I mean, you could, but you'll look like a fool. Now, Tom's secret and the rule I'm going to teach you today is essentially the act of intentionally setting the stage so that you have the conversation you want to have, so that you can send the message you intend to send. And gents, what I love about this is once you understand this rule, not only are you going to start to see it everywhere, but you can start to use it for yourself. Seriously, this style, this image rule has nothing to do with money. No, it's based off science, repetition, and you doing the work once. And that's incredibly important because I know a lot of you guys are not only tight on funds, but you're incredibly busy. So, to start with, let's illustrate this rule with our favorite tech billionaire, Sam Bankman Freed. Now, maybe SBF isn't the best example because he's going through some tough times. I mean, he's recently lost over 99% of his wealth. He's been convicted of multiple crimes related to fraud, and I'm sure we'll soon have a boyfriend in the big house who'll be tucking him in every night. In any case, during his trial, Caroline Ellison, a one-time girlfriend, apparently disclosed one of his style secrets. You see, it turns out that Sam Bankman Freed wanted to be perceived as a genius. You see, he was worried about being perceived as a billionaire braggart. And so, apparently, early on in his career, he realized that his hair, the whole disheveled look, actually gave him a huge advantage. In fact, he attributed to getting bigger bonuses while on Wall Street because people thought he was some type of genius. You know nothing. Apparently, at the trading firm he worked at, Jane Street, this whole unkept hair look was viewed as, God, this guy has so much going through his head, he doesn't even have time to worry about his grooming. And gents, as crazy as this sounds, there's a lot of truth to it. I know personally, when I think of a genius, I think of Albert. Einstein. And what do I think of? I think of the guy with the disheveled hair if you've read anything about his life or anything about the lives of geniuses, it seems like grooming is one of the last things they pay attention to. In fact, Stanford law professor and author Richard Thompson Ford, author of the book Dress Codes, How Laws of Fashion Made History, talked about how throughout history, people have used unique styles to make them instantly recognizable. In fact, he said leveraging this signals a down-to-earth rejection of fashionable artifice while still using the power of fashion. So, what does this have to do with tech billionaires and what exactly is this style rule I keep referring to? Gentlemen, it's called controlling the frame. So, getting back to my buddy, the lawyer, Tom, and any of you guys that have studied law, you know this, that you set up an argument, you set up the words in a way that the person on the stand, guess what? No matter what they say, it is going to be in your favor. Basically, you are controlling the lens that the jury, that the audience is looking through and therefore, you control exactly what they see. Gents, controlling the frame, we see it all the time, especially in politics. I don't understand how my opponent can be silent on the issue and let those people die. Well, he's actually not silent on the issue. The tornado just hit an hour ago and you can't really blame the deaths on him. That doesn't matter because the words coming out of his mouth are framing it in a way that if you hear this, you assume that this person's a murderer. And unfortunately, journalists do this all the time when they're asking leading questions, questions that they know the response they want or the emotion they want to get from the individual. That's why whether you lean to the left or the right, you can notice that certain stations, well, they seem to find an audience and they seem to find evidence that backs up what they're saying. Now, bringing this back to style, if you wanted to create a perception that you're an everyday guy, that you're like somebody I would run into at Whole Foods, well, maybe you would wear a black turtleneck, a pair of jeans, and a pair of New Balance sneakers. Now, I don't even have to say the guy's name. So many of you guys know this iconic look as that of Steve Jobs. Now, early on in his career, Steve Jobs actually dressed the part of an up and coming executive, of the CEO of an up and coming company. But once he established, hey, I want to be focused in on the creativity, I want my image to become iconic. And again, we see this in the fashion 
industry, but you also see this in the tech industry again and again. Because let's be straight up, Steve Jobs crafted that image. In fact, that turtleneck was designed by the famous Japanese French design house Issey Miyake. And again, this message was carefully crafted because Steve Jobs wanted these three pieces of clothing to form an outfit that sent a message. I'm approachable. I'm just like you. My products are for the everyday person. Another tech billionaire, this one that's alive, that's perfected this. Let's go over and look at Mark Zuckerberg. The gray t-shirt, the hoodie, the jeans, pretty much these three items this guy is circulating and he wears the same stuff again and again as he shared with the world whenever he took a picture of his closet when returning after his first child was born. But make no mistake, those t-shirts, they are high-end t-shirts. Those are made by Brunello Cuccelli. And of course, Mark can don a suit whenever he's testifying before Congress. He gets dressed up. But what message does he want to send at work to the world whenever they see him? He's just an average guy. He's just like me and you. He doesn't own a monopoly that should be broken up. You see, this one style rule that every tech billionaire understands is that image, perception is power. These guys got billions of dollars, but they also realize they're still at risk to governments or groups or organizations that want to paint them as the bad guy. But of course they're not because absolute power and tons of money couldn't corrupt, could it? Now for this next example, let's go over to Envita. Any of you guys familiar with Jensen Huang? Well, over the last 20 years, pretty much every public appearance, what has he worn? a black leather jacket. And for the most part, he also pairs this with a black t-shirt and black jeans. Now, he does change up the jackets a bit. Sometimes they look more like a motorcycle type jacket. They got the zippers. They've got all the different flaps. Other times he's going for something that's a little bit more sleek, but the jackets are always black. In fact, when he did a Reddit, Ask Me Anything back in 2016, he identified himself as the guy in the black leather jacket. Now, Jens is worth like over $40 billion. He can afford a nice suit. He can afford nice casual clothing. So, why is he wearing this black leather leather jacket, even in conditions in which it's pretty warm outside. Straight up, this Taiwanese businessman truly understands the power of an iconic image of a look that people can quickly identify and they can spot him. And it's not because he needs the attention, but because he wants to control the lens, how people are seeing him as a rebel, as somebody that's out there making things happen. Someone that, of course, doesn't own a monopoly on chips. Gents, here's the real truth. These billionaires, they want to be liked. Yes, part of it's because of their ego. You look at Jeff Bezos, the guy's really beefed up. He's got a new girlfriend. I mean, the guy probably wants to be cool because he was never cool, but now having, you know, being the richest man in the world definitely makes him, I, I think, a little bit cooler. You see, billionaires that are liked, companies that are liked, because it kind of they kind of rub off each other. It's called the halo effect. They are less likely to, let's say, be attacked by governments or groups that perceive them as a threat, that perceive them as a monopoly that needs to be broken up. Now, you can argue that the regulators see through it, but the court of public opinion. When we see an owner, Elon Musk is a great example. For the longest time, that guy got a pass because a lot of us just simply liked him, me included. Now you see he's kind of just going off the rails a bit, and, but we still, you know, we don't want to be disproven. A lot of us still like, ah, we're still throwing our, you know, we want to, we want to still see him succeed. My point, gents, is that when you are liked by the public, you are less likely to suffer, especially from elected public officials going after you. And if they do, I mean, come on, most of us hate politicians to see someone we hate going after someone we love. Well, some people will actually write to their congressman. Other people simply are going to write stories, create content that is going to dissuade those from going after them from being too harsh. And speaking of Elon Musk, now that he's kind of reached this superstardom point, I think that he's experimenting with a lot of styles just because he can. I mean, the guy's made enough money and he wields enough power that now he's probably thinking about legacy. Here's a guy that wants to be perceived as a cowboy, as a maverick, so he's throwing it out there and he does know that the way he dresses, the clothing he puts on reinforces a lot of people's opinions of him already. So he wears a cowboy hat, he comes off as a cowboy, as a renegade, as a maverick. While to those who perceive him as unhinged, they just view him as going off the deep end. Now, at this point, you may be wondering, well, how do I assess my personal style? Well, gents, if you didn't know, here at Real Men Real Style, we've developed what we call the style score. We've got a really quick and easy quiz that you can take and at the end of it, you'll be given a specific number and areas that we think you can improve upon. Seriously, it's just a fun little test that we put together and I'll link to it down in the description of today's video. Now, let's get back to the ego part because I think there are some billionaires that have achieved a lot, but they still want to be recognized or they want to be recognized by certain groups. Jack Dorsey being one that comes to my mind, when you look at his early style, the guy really didn't go out there. He sported a bit of facial hair. I think once he reached that point, if he doesn't have to worry about money, he wanted to be known for more than just Twitter 
He was focusing over on square. You look at the guy's style. It definitely has gone all over the place. I mean, just look at this presentation and the pants the guy's wearing along with those shoes. He's having fun with it and there's nothing wrong with that. And how can you forget that Zoom call whenever the guy was sporting this complete year that was all over the place? What was the image that people got? A lot of people were worrying about his health. They thought he just looked really disheveled. Now, who knows what's going on in his head? But if you look at where he makes donations, if you look at where his passions seem to lie, a lot of it is definitely non-traditional approaches to business and to changing society. And so I can see where, you know, why this guy's definitely got what many people perceive as him trying to come off as this really hip innovator. And let's talk about Sam Altman. This guy knows that he's being watched. He knows that he has come from out of nowhere for a lot of people and they're seeing him for the first time. He is now the poster boy of AI. And for better or worse, he's taken up that mantle and he also is paying attention to his style. You look at the way that he rolls up his sleeves. You look at the sunglasses. The guy is always spotted with a pair of sunglasses. That being said, when he needs to dress up, he needs to impress those lawmakers. He knows how to do it. If you're a tech billionaire, you don't have to be over the top. And I think this is the majority of them. We look at Microsoft, Satya Nadella. This Indian native, very classic, very conservative in his style. He's not looking to blow people out of the water. Although he does have high end taste in sneakers. Apparently the internet took notice to his wearing of a pair of Parisian Landvins. And let's go back to Apple. Let's look at the new man in charge, Tim Cook. Again, blue jeans, nothing really to write about, nothing to talk about. Business as usual, which is the way Apple wants it. Remember, gents, when you control the frame, you control the message being sent. And all these tech billionaires are doing it because they understand they are in the public eye. So, how can you use this to your advantage? By developing your own personal style. And gentlemen, I've got a video right here that explains exactly how to do it. So, check it out. Enjoy. And uh, yeah, go check out this other video. I think you will love it. And guys, developing your own personal style, it's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, check it out. Good one. Boom. Right there.